Hello and welcome. Mark Hepp at CampgroundViews.com. Today I'm going to talk to you about Glacier National Park and the record crowds that are heading to that location. So 2021 has shaped up to be what we thought it was going to be, which is the year of camping. So everybody is going camping this year. A lot of, well, not everybody, a large volume of people. In fact, uh, KOA was saying something like 51 million people will go camping this summer. And this summer started officially last night. So it is now officially the summer season and it lasts for three months. You know, summertime uh, runs traditionally the camping season is Memorial Day to Labor Day, but uh, everything's been bonkers. So a lot of we've been getting a lot of questions here at campgroundviews.com about where to stay and, and how to go enjoy the major national parks. So Yellowstone, Yosemite, um, Glacier National Park. So I'll be doing a, a few of these videos with our feedback for all of you. So you can take that and, and make a. Uh, better decisions with your time or at least enjoy the time that you have at these national parks. So um, this first one we're going to talk about is Glacier National Park. So Glacier National Park, I'll actually uh, share my screen with you so we can um, kind of talk about it. I'll be minimized up here in the corner and we are now looking at Glacier National Park. So as, as the public parks have so eloquently showed us with their big red banner here, we're still in COVID-19 on the federal um, system. So COVID-19 is on their mind. So you're going to have to deal with it, live with it when you're there. Um, not getting the virus, but dealing with uh, all the, the stuff that comes with it. So um, we won't go further into that, but we'll just say that, that because of COVID-19, they've changed the way they operate the parks, operate the rules, and have used it as a, a means to um, some of the long-term plans that they discussed and never could get pushed through. And number one, and first and foremost, is this right here. Going to the Sun Road requires ticketed entry. This had been discussed for years. And this is also in uh, Yosemite, um, Yellowstone, Rocky Mountain National Park. Those park managers have been discussing for years um, requiring ticketed entry or limited entry and access into these parks. Under um, the COVID rules and the new system they have, they've been able to implement that. And so um, this year for the first time, uh, you need a uh, ticketed entry to get into the going to the Sun Road. And you'll notice that they say this is the West Glacier, St. Mary, or the Kamas Road entrances. What that means, and the reason I'm going through this is this is really important for you if you're deciding on where you want to go stay in Glacier National Park and actually plan your trip. This is important details that you need to think about. So this is uh, Google Maps of Glacier National Park. There's Lake McDonald. You see Apgar right here. That road that heads up to the right here is the going to the Sun Road. It climbs up to the top of the pass here, which is absolutely beautiful at Logan Pass. You can hike this trail right here, and there are mountain goats along it. Really, really pretty location. And then the going to the Sun Road goes back down and over to St. Mary. If you arrive um, after 6 a.m. and before, I think the time is like 6 p.m., you know, so basically during the day from May 28th through September 6th, you are required, if you enter at any of these locations, to have a pass. So every, everybody may be familiar, there's an entrance here at St. Mary to the Going to Sun Road. There is an entrance down here at West Glacier. It's actually the Apgar entrance right, it's like right here, West Entrance. See, West Entrance between West Glacier and Apgar Visitor. And Kamas Road is this road that goes north here. You'll see if we follow it around, it loops around and there is an entrance there. Interesting about this entrance here, right here, is there is a gate. Let me see if I can get it on satellite. There is a ranger checkpoint right around here somewhere. There it is. So that should be a. But there's a ranger checkpoint into the. There it is. Kamas Creek entrance. There it is. So there's a ranger entrance point right here. So in order to get through and into the going to the Sun Road, you have to have a pass. Now, the way around that is by arriving before 6 a.m., then you won't need to um, have a ticketed entry into it. So if you arrive before 6 a.m., you're good. Or if you arrive late in the evening, you are good also. You know, one way would be if you have a campsite inside the, the campground, you could, or inside the national park, you could get there anytime because your, your campsite gets you access into it. But overall, entrance and access into the park is really difficult right now. One of the things you'll see if you're on Google Maps, you'll see this other road right here, this little, this little road that kind of looks like you can go ahead and go around that entry station. A couple of years ago, that road was washed out. Um, it is accessible for bicycles. You can ride a bike on there or hike it. 
um, but vehicles cannot pass it right now. You can go north though. And so here's a trick. If you're absolutely going to Glacier, you don't have a pass. Hey, Mark, what can I do? Well, before this entrance station off this North Fork Road, take a left here and follow the river up and go up to this left side of, of the National Park up to Bowman Lake or Kentla Lake, two of the more scenic locations within the National Park. There are campgrounds here. There's a campground at Bowman Lake. There's a campground at Kitla Lake. Um, and those generally are not um, as full. It's a dirt road drive out to there. Um, so I wouldn't take any RVs or anything. It's, um, you know, it's a little bit rough. It, you're going to need to go slow if you don't have a lot of off-road travel. Um, you can take a vehicle up there, a car. Just know it's dusty, dirty, really adventurous place to go in Glacier National Park. So that's the basic thing to be aware of with Glacier National Park is this ticketed entry. As a result, what I'm advising folks to do is, you know, if, if you absolutely have to go to Glacier, you know, make the, the plans and go through all the hoops in order to go see it. It's amazing, absolutely worth the trip. But if you're like, yeah, you know, we can go again next year, you know, we'll go try something else. That's where stuff gets really interesting. So that's Glacier National Park. There is stuff to see along the East Glacier area over here. The Southern Road on US 2 is a pretty area. But there's also, you're in Montana. Everybody's moving to Kalispell now and Whitefish. This entire region is absolutely amazing. And if you simply come a little bit to the west here, like Libby, Montana, amazing. Just flat out amazing location. There's some RV parks and campgrounds all around this location. You have national forest. You are away from the hustle and bustle of Glacier, but yet you're in the forest in the beautiful area. An alternative to going into Glacier National Park. But now let's go back over to Glacier National Park because that's what we're talking about here. So, okay, Mark, so we got our booking. Problem I'm having is the campgrounds are full. And that, that can be an issue. The big thing to know about for the campgrounds within Glacier um, National Park is that some are reservable and some are not. So they actually have on their page here a little icon where to camp. So you can go in here and get details on camping at Glacier National uh, Park. They also have a campground status page, one of the few national parks that has this. And the reason they have this is a large number of their campgrounds are um, first come, first serve. You can't book them. And you'll notice that the main campgrounds within Apgar over by Camas or Camas, Spread Creek, all these campgrounds around here are um, booked because they're crowded. They have also closed campgrounds, as you can see, because yeah, I don't, I don't have a reason why they're closed, but they're closed. Um, the trick here is um, campgrounds at Two Medicine, Bowman Lake, and Kentla Lake. So these are small campgrounds. In fact, we can take a look at them real fast. So if we go to Glacier National Park over at campgroundviews.com, so I'm just going to search Glacier National Park. The default search radius is 50 miles, so we'll see what pops up. Yeah, there we go. Um, it shows you a bunch of campgrounds, right? 68 campgrounds and RV parks within 50 miles of Glacier National Park. There's lots of choices up here. Um, this will be Bowman Lake. So I'll pop up Bowman real fast. Bowman Lake Campground, I believe it has about 35 sites or so. Um, don't quote me on that exact number. Let's see. I think it's about 35 sites. Um, it's first come, first serve. It's accessible via dirt road. Uh, we have a video on it so you can go uh, see the campground if you want to see what it looks like. It's basically a pretty spot in the trees. The, the trick on Bowman Lake here, though, is it typically has a lot of mosquitoes a lot of mosquitoes. So bring the bug spray if you're staying there. Uh, we, we can watch that whole video and see the photos and stuff. Bowman Lake's a great spot. There's hiking trails from there. You can go out onto the lake with a, a canoe. Or you can go fishing. Really good spot. And you are technically camping in the National Park. And I don't, let's see if we have a photo from the lake. So yeah, here we go. Here's a photo looking out at Bowman Lake. This was a photo um, taken right from the shoreline near the campground um, and looking up the canyon. And it, you can see in this photo, it's a very uh, smoky day. Um, you can imagine on a clear day how that looks. So you can take some um, paddle boats out on this lake and, and tool around and you can go fishing. Very, very beautiful spot. So that's uh, Bowman Lake Campground and Glacier National Park. The other one is Kintla Lake. And it's not coming up on this result because it's a little bit further out. So let's, or maybe coming up on page two. Yeah, let's try page two. There we go. Page two of our results, Kintla Lake. Kintla Lake is actually a campground that's uh, very scenic, but very small. This is for tents, truck campers. I wouldn't really take a, a trailer up here unless it's a really small one. Um, you go across a river. We actually have a 360 virtual tour of this campground, so you can 
Let me mute that. You can actually go through the campground and uh, take a look around. Look at this, this is kind of cool. It's an old school um, 360 video from when we first started doing these. Notice the wobbliness and stuff. We've gotten rid of all that and fixed it, which is awesome. Um, but you can look around. So you can drag the screen and look around at the campsites, at the roads and see what I mean. So very pretty spot to go camping. And that campground is first come first serve. The trick there is it's only 13 sites. So you need to get out there relatively early. Um, a trick on this one, and um, you didn't hear this from me, is when you pull up to an, the entry gate, notably, notably down at Apgar and also at the Kamas, if you pull up to the entry gate, they have a sign outside of it. And it has information similar to this, but generally it says open or closed, right? And so the thing about this data source here, this, um, this tool at Glacier National Park, is you get a really good idea of when the campgrounds are filling up in the morning um, and then what time they fill it up that day, right? So yesterday, today. So it gives you an idea of the demand of that market. So in the case of Kintla Lake, and Bowman filled up at 5 p.m., right, in the afternoon. So you're not having to get there at, at 11 a.m. to get the site. You can show up in the middle of the day and get the site. Same thing with Kintla, right? So it's a really good tool for planning your trip. Those two campgrounds are national park campgrounds, and they are good choices if you're going camping. Now, if you're in an RV, different story. You're not staying at Bowman. You're not staying at Kintla. And very unlikely going to be staying within the national park itself. So what can you do next? Well, there's a few things you can do. What I'm going to do is pop up our new tool that we have. It's called virtual tours. Um, and what I did is I just, I had the same search results here. I just flagged the virtual tour. There are more of these coming online every day. Right now we have these campgrounds within, uh, within and around the national park um, available for virtual tours. This campground, Big Creek Campground, is right at the border of the national park. It's a four service campground. And as I noted, we have a campground virtual tour of it. So this new tool will load. Um, and it's like that other video, the 360 video that we were looking at. Um, let me see. Oh, there it goes. I hit refresh. Darn it, Mark, you screwed it up. All right, let's let that load again. Um, it takes a little bit of bandwidth. It's loading a uh, high resolution video. So it takes a little bit of bandwidth to work. Um, my internet connection is apparently slowed down. Lovely, there it goes. Um, so Big Creek Campground is, as you can see, a very pretty spot. So all you have to do is move your mouse to look around. Up, down, left, right, right. So now we're looking at this campground. And then what you could do is hit play. When you hit play, um, my face may be in the way. Up here on the top right, you'll see there's a little map um, with markers on it showing you where the sites are. As you go through the campground, you can look around. Again, left, right, up or down. You can hit pause and you can jump forward or backward um, in the tour. When you're out on the tour, let's go ahead and hit play here. Let's, whoops, going backwards for you. We're coming out towards the sites. I'm going to jump ahead a little bit further so we can get up in the sites. There we go. Perfect. That was a good jump. Okay, so now we're in the campsites themselves. Once you're in here, you can actually click on the icons and get information on the campsite and then click to visit. And that'll take you into recreation.gov for that site. Um, I don't know. This is a first come first site, first serve site. Um, let's continue on. And what you'll do here in, with this tool is say you're planning your dates out into the future. You would simply select the dates that you're looking to go stay, uh, confirm the date selection that you have, and these icons would change from red to green if they are available. Then you can go through the campground and pick your sites. So the interesting thing, I think this is a first come first serve site. Also, let me back up a little bit. So I jump backwards to this campsite. I believe this is first come, first serve. Let me get information on it. Yes, first come, first serve. OK, so the, the great thing about this campground is that it is first come, first serve. And not a lot of people are going to fight for that because um, it is a little bit out there. So this is an option for you if you have a bigger unit. Um, it is a dirt road to get back there. It's a well-graded, gravelly dirt road, very dusty. Um, but once you're into the campground, this is more of a, uh, a packed, finer um, gravel, so it doesn't get as quite as dusty. And as you can see, the campsites are plenty big. Um, the only issue is just backing into them. You need to be efficient at backing up your unit. This is a good option for um, a public-style campground um, right near Glacier National Park. You'll notice you're right here. You're right up next to that road. I told you you could take up to uh, Kintla and Bowman. So this could be, you stop here and try to get a site here. If you don't, then go up to Bowman, then go up to Kentwood, depending upon the equipment that you have. We also have some campgrounds with 360s out near Whitefish. Uh, this is Tally Lake Campground, really pretty spot. 
but a, a much lesser known area that's a good option outside of Glacier National Park because it provides very scenic views in a very unique location is actually Hungry Horse Reservoir. So this Hungry Horse Reservoir, you can kind of see it on the Google Maps. There is a mountain chain on the northeastern side and a mountain chain on the southwestern side. So it's in a valley, very similar to Glacier National Park. And there are four service campgrounds all along this route. In fact, if I uncheck this, we may get a few of them to pop up along there. Oh, I messed up my search result. What page am I on? Page one. Go to page two, three. I took away my whole explanation. There we go. Um, on page three, we got some, you'll notice there's campgrounds all along here. The north side is more uh, remote and a little bit rougher road. The south side has a really nice dirt road that goes along the banks of the, the lake. Very, very beautiful spot to go camping. And we have campgrounds uh, that you can find and look at. I think we even have a number of virtual tours of campgrounds along this lake. Yep. So similar idea, you can go into these click on them and go and check out those campgrounds. This location, um, I, was, I was playing around with this a little earlier as I was looking at um, the videos as we are posting them up. This area, um, look, at, look at these roads, look at this campground, very beautiful spot to go. A lot of folks that are more local tend to go to these campgrounds. So they tend to be full, you know, picking random dates, it tends to be a little bit more crowded, but nonetheless, an alternative to some of the other uh, public parks that you could stay at that are a little bit out of the way. So that's the public parks. So you've got National Park and Forest Service uh, campgrounds and RV parks that are located around um, Glacier National Park. But I noted that there are 68 campgrounds located in that area, and these are campgrounds and RV parks. There are a large number of private campgrounds located just outside of the National Park. So St. Mary East Glacier KOA, a very popular location located over here in St. Mary. Very pretty views from that campground. Um, and there are also a number of other campgrounds on the West Glacier side and uh, Corum, Montana. In fact, I will pull up Corum as my centered search. So I'm gonna search Corum, Montana. Let my results change and show you these campgrounds along here. The reason I'll, I'll show you this is um, my brother actually just planned his trip to Glacier and he booked his campsite a week ago and he's gonna be there in a little bit less than a month. And he was able to get a campsite. And the way he did this, he used this tool and he found is actually this Timber Wolf Resort had a campsite available for him. So there's a number of private RV parks along here. There's also other public parks, but there are a lot of options within this region. The trick here to getting a site is the same trick I share with a lot of folks. And I'll give you some background on it as I'm giving you this trick. So. My wife and I were full-time RVers. <laughs> we traveled for 12 years, and the last six were in a 44-foot fifth wheel. Big unit, right? Triple axle. You're only staying in the big sites. We never made reservations. The only time I made a reservation was in the morning. I would call ahead to see if the site was available. And so what I would do is this trick that I'm going to show you. So if we were heading to Glacier National Park, um, I would generally call in advance to see how, how crowded they are. You know, hey, I'm going to be there in, in two weeks. What do you? What is your occupancy at right now? And you know, when it's like this, they'd say, we're full. Sorry, we don't have anything. Okay, well, you know, how many cancellations did you have today? Oh, well, we had two cancellations today. Okay, I just wanted to verify that. I make my list of the campgrounds that I want to stay at. I make my list one through five. Here's my preference, one through five. The morning of the, our trip, when we're going to start driving up there, remember, we're full-timers, a little bit different style. We can be flexible, but um, I would call the morning of it, and I'd go down my list and say, hey, you know, I'm calling to see if you got any sites available. Nine times out of 10, by the time I got to my number three choice, I would get the response of, oh yeah, we just had a cancellation the site opened up. I could slide you right into it. Nine times out of 10. In fact, the only time that didn't happen, I had to get down to the um, number six in order to, to find a site. The reason being is this year being the summer of camping, one of the biggest trends we're seeing right now is a large portion of people are booking around their stay so that, hey, we know we, we're going to be in that area uh, the 4th of July weekend and then maybe a little bit longer. They've actually booked like the, as much as they can. So say they can book up to two weeks. They've actually booked and reserved that and are willing to give up the, the loss of a cancellation fee. And then they, as the dates get closer, they cancel the days that they're actually not going to be there. So it's a big problem for the RV park owners. It's a real advantage for all of us who are looking for spots at the last minute because these things open up on the fly very quickly. And then it's just a matter of making the call and getting a hold of them. And sometimes 
um, you know, those one times out of 10 where, where stuff's really full, I would call, say, hey, you got a site available? No, I don't. Well, I'm interested in being there. If something happens in the next hour or two, give me a call back. And inevitably, I get a call from one of those parks. Hey, we had a site open up. And it was always funny. We would get one of those. And then about an hour later, somebody else would call. Hey, our site opened up. You know, So um, it's a good way to find campgrounds. So utilizing a tool like campgroundviews.com will help you go to parks like Glacier National Park. It is crowded up there. It, there is a lot going on. There's a lot of noise, um, a lot of stress, a lot of, lot of stuff going on. Uh, it is something to be very cognizant of if you're heading to a destination like Glacier National Park, that there's a lot of just noise, a lot of, lot of things going on. And to ask yourself, is that where you want to be for your vacation? And if not, you'll definitely look into some of the other regions outside of the park in locales that aren't as known, that may be as amazing, if not more amazing than uh, that specific spot. I'd always recommend that you do uh, make sure you get to visit um, Glacier National Park in your lifetime. But you know, if this year is not it, start looking at some of these other locations. There's some really nice campgrounds and really nice destinations outside of the National Park. So I hope this tool is useful. If you have questions about Glacier National Park, and I'm filming this on June 23rd, 2021. So if it's a week out or a few weeks out, feel free to um, post updates and comments below. And by all means, go out and enjoy your camping trips. Should be fun. Take it in stride and enjoy it. Have a good day.